This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness, and today we are taking a look at some more Valheim news. Let's get to it. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this absolutely insane looking catapult, which I can only assume is going to be part of the new siege mechanic in the Ashlands. If you missed my last video covering the Valheim Ashlands news, I mentioned that they talked about how in the Ashlands, the special item that you're going to need for or whatever progression will be locked behind some sort of castles and siege mechanic. And it looks like that mechanic is probably going to be making use of this catapult in order to bust into whatever castle structure that you're going to be attacking. And I just got to say, this thing looks absolutely amazing. So you can see that it looks like they repurposed the cart a little bit here. It has the same type of handles that the cart has, insinuating that we probably are going to to have to hook up to this thing and drag it behind us. What I think would be really cool is if it was too big for us to pull behind us. So in order to pull it, you had to hook it up to a locks. That would be frustrating and awesome at the same time. Frustrating because judging from the early images that we've seen from this biome, navigating it is going to be slightly dangerous in a way not quite like the Mistlands, but in a fiery hot death surrounds you kind of way. And navigating through that situation on a locks would be a real pain in the butt. However, it would give a solid use to the locks, forcing you to have to tame one in order to hook this car to it to use it to siege these castles. You'll also notice that when it is prepared to fire and the character walks up to it, it states to insert item. And then once it fires, that item is a rock and it drops directly on the ground in front of the thing. And it's an actual rock resource that you can pick up, which is pretty cool but it would also be pretty cool if we can put other things inside of it besides rocks to throw as well. I'm not 100% sure because there are lots of things in this game that say insert item and then when you try to put a different item into it it just tells you that that's not the right item or it won't accept it but it would be cool if we could launch all kinds of different stuff and especially people. I really really hope we can launch people. Now moving on to the Hilder's Quest update goodness there is an absolutely amazing thing that is coming with the Hilder's Quest update and I can't freaking wait for it. And that is something all good survival games need and that is world modifiers. This is absolutely fantastic. First, it's fantastic for accessibility reasons, right? Because there are plenty of people out there who I'm sure would love to enjoy this game and they just can't for accessibility reasons. Maybe they don't have the reflexes needed to handle a lot of the combat in the game due to arthritis or whatever reason they may have. Soon you will be able to tailor the game to whatever you can handle for maximum enjoyment. Let's take a look and break this menu down because there is a lot of info here. And even if you've seen these videos already, you may have missed some stuff. So as soon as you activate the world modifiers menu, you get a warning that says, please note these settings can disrupt and ruin your Valheim experience if used incorrectly. It is highly recommended to play with original settings as the game was meant to be played played and balanced after for your first playthrough. And this is true because they allow for some very drastic changes to be made to your Valheim world. So you can see we have a bunch of different settings. First off, they have presets, easy, hard, hardcore, casual, hammer mode, and immersive, and then the button to reset to default. If you do not wish to use one of the presets, you can customize the combat difficulty, your death penalty, your resource drop rate, and the rate raid rate, which is how often your base will be raided, as well as the ability to portal with items or not. I can assume that this one is the one that will allow you to portal with metal or not. This is a very contentious subject, the whole portal thing. They did not highlight over this button, so we did not get a description for this button, but considering we got descriptions for everything else, it's easy to come to the conclusion that this allows you to portal non-portable items. Then we have no build cost, which just allows you to build for free. Then we have the ability to toggle player-based event.
events. So essentially what this does is it makes it so that the raids that happen on your base will happen at whatever level the highest player is currently on the server. As the game stands right now, when raids are triggered, they are triggered to whatever the highest progression is on the server, period. So if you are playing with a bunch of friends and you all aren't playing together and one of your friends is already beaten old Yagi Boy, you will get the Mistlands raids. What this will do is if you're the only one on and you haven't beaten old Yagi Boy, you will get Yagi Boy's raids instead of Mistlands raids. Hopefully that makes sense. This is an absolute fantastic button for people who play together on servers, especially if you're not playing together as one large group. Moving on, we have no map. This just turns off your mini map, making it harder to navigate. No portals, that deactivates portals completely. And last but not least, passive enemies. This makes it so that the enemies will not attack you until they are attacked first. I like that they did it that way instead of just making them completely passive because then that just kind of takes the fun out of it. Making them passive until you attack them still allows for the fun of combat but makes it a little bit easier to get around the world without constantly being harassed if you wish to not constantly be harassed. Then we actually have a full breakdown on the death penalty slider because apparently for some reason this was a point of contention. I don't know why. Part of me assumes that it is the vocal minority making that contention but anyway I digress. Death penalty slider absolutely fantastic addition to the rest of the modifiers we get to mess with. First off we have the lowest setting which is casual. You do not drop equipped gear and skills are reduced slightly. Then we have very easy. You drop all items and skills are reduced slightly. Then we have normal. You drop all items and skills are reduced normally. Then we have hard that states equipped items are dropped. The rest of your inventory is lost permanently and skills are reduced faster. And last but not least, we have hardcore. You lose all carried items and skills permanently. This is more or less your permadeath version without actually deleting your character. I think all of these settings and being able to toggle them are absolutely fantastic. I mean, people are already toggling all of these things with mods anyway, and anybody who has a problem, because there are apparently people out there who have a problem with world modifiers, need to just keep their mouth shut and let people enjoy the games they want to play the way they want to play them, because you can still play normal. It's not going to make any difference. It's not going to take anything from you. And honestly, these people who have a problem with this and think that it somehow takes away of their accomplishment of beating the game with its default settings need to now beat the game on permadeath mode and show people how awesome they really are. I have a big feeling a majority of these people who are vocal about not having world modifiers won't dare touch the hardcore mode. Anyway, hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you want to see some of my other Valheim content, you can check out the link that's on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.